Ultra Balls, Dusk Balls, and the now infamous Quick Ball. All are tools we often use to catch our Pokemon, but they all have their roots in the classic Pokeball. Quite possibly the second most iconic spherical object after the Earth itself. Ah shoot, there goes my flat earth fanbase. But the regular Pokeball is more than likely going to be the first type of Pokeball you use in your playthrough. I just got Pokemon Scarlet after playing Violet for a while, and I need the Shiny Charm, which means I need to complete the Pokedex. But what if you were to only use the regular Pokeball? Could you still complete the Pokedex? And if so, how long would it take you? Well, let's find out. So let's explain the complex rule set of this challenge. I can only use Pokeballs. I know, I know, it's a lot to take in. In the interest of saving everyone time, I won't go over every Pokemon I had to catch, but I will take you through my path in the story and keep you updated on what I'm catching along the way. Let's begin. Your starter comes in a Pokeball. You only have Pokeballs to catch this late chunk and everything else on Pokopath. When you get Coridon's Pokeball from Arvin, it's a regular Pokeball. Yeah, the start is a regular playthrough. You usually can't use a different ball even if you wanted to. But speaking of balls, today's video is brought to you by nobody because, you know, new YouTube channel and all, but that was a perfect opportunity for that, and you know it. But I was catching everything to start off. Caught Lechonk, Hopip, Tarantula, Fletchling, Scatterbug, and Palmy, then a Young Goose and Diglett in the cave. And once we get through the lighthouse and past the river, we can catch a bunch more. Azuril, Psyduck, Deerling, Fido, Wooper, Boizel, Hapini, Iglybuff, and Ralts. We could catch even more, but I ran out of Pokeballs already. But here's the good thing. Pokeballs are basically your main expense until the end game, and only using the the cheapest Pokeball actually saves a lot of money. I bought 40 more and started catching some more stuff on the way to Mezagosa, Bonsly, Shrudel, Oracorio, Squovit, and Surskit, before taking on Nimona in the first battle. Seeing as I was catching everything, gaining a lot of experience, the fight was easy. Before heading to school though, I'd go back out, fight a few trainers, and catch a Pichu and a Sunkern. Then on the way to class, we steal some kids' lunch money. We get all these storylines, and boom, we're off to adventuring. I wanted to do this somewhat quickly, so we need to move fast, hence Cloth is up first. On the way to it, I would catch Knackly, Rookadi, Charcadet, Shinx, Gimigul, and Skiddo. Cloth was kind of a struggle because basically my entire party was weak to rock, but ain't nothing in the rules saying I can't use potions. And after the battle, Fuecoco gets thick. I named him Dan, by the way. Doesn't Fuecoco just look like a Dan? Not so much Skeledurge, though. After catching a different cloth, our Azuril got more round. Then I went west, catching Starly, Smoliv, and Eevee, before doing the challenge for the Bug Gym. And after it, I would catch a couple more EVs here too for evolutions later. To start off the playthrough, I was using Oricorio as a way of saying thank you for me getting four shinies of them in the last video. It takes down Katie's team with ease, especially because it's a single stage Pokemon has higher base stats than others at this level. And after a battle with a random trainer, Meryl evolved into a Zumaril. On the road to Bombardier, I caught a Drifloon and Nimble, after which my Hopip evolved into Skiploom. I also caught Capsicid, Mankey, Ghastly, Hatena, Rayo, and not a shiny, but still emotionally supportive Dunsbars. And this is when I decided to do my first Terra Raid Den for something, and that was Tainamo. I do kind of like this evolution line, but it's so easy to forget it's in this game. When I saw it here, I was like, oh, I should catch this, because it's so small you'll never see it. Kind of like my sister. I got all the height in the family, and she got none of it. But I started doing all of this pretty late in the day, so this would be the end of day one. But before we go on, I have to say a massive thank you to you guys for all of the support lately. By the time this video goes up, we should be at 15,000 subscribers, and that's all in this past month, basically. I'm so happy you guys are enjoying the content, and if you're enjoying the content, double check to make sure you're subscribed. There's more quality Pokemon content on the way. Day 2 started just as day 1 ended, in a terror raid. A little up the road, I also found Finian in a raid, so I dealt with that too. But then it was time to take down the Titan. I stand by what I've said about this bird in the past. Outside of this Titan battle, nobody really cares about this Pokemon. It's a bird, and I usually like birds, but not this one. It's just very forgettable. After this battle, I felt it was finally time to change out of the default clothing. Looking quite drippy fam, as the kids would say. On the way down the road, I caught a Rockruff and the Ugly Burb, then I met up 
with the director, who's out here trying to match my drip. But all the outfits kind of suck, so we're pretty even. I jumped into the desert to get around the Team Star base for now, catching a stone journer while I was there. And I didn't want to take on the water gym just yet, so I flew back to Artisan for the grass gym next. We had the power of Dan, so it was easy. You can kind of see how I'm starting to slow down on catching everything, just going to do it later. The only Pokemon I caught before going to Lavincio was Tauros. And after I got there, I went back out and did a few raids, including catching Silicobra. And I found a Rotom just outside of Lavincio which took me over five minutes to catch. Yeah, after the first couple of gyms, you start getting these low catch rate Pokemon. But it was here where I would make this playthrough take a bit of a different approach than you'd normally see. Or maybe it's normal at this point, I don't really know. But I decided to evolve my Riolu into Lucario. And with Lucario being fully evolved, I decided to skip the electric gym for the moment and get the Steel Titan out of the way. In the process, just absolutely smacking the rock and steel type Pokemon around here. I'd evolve Knackly into Knacklestack, catch a Larvitar, and climb a tower before taking on Orthworm. Let's test your Pokemon knowledge. Lucario's level 26, two levels below Orthworm. How much damage does Aura Spear do? That's right. All of it. Not on the second time because of the boosted stats, but about half of it. After this, I went running around to fast travel points, stumbling into a Glimit, and surprisingly was able to catch it in the first ball, even above my level cap. I would keep running to more fast travel points, eventually getting to Medali. And this is where I found out the true strength of Lucario. Let's test your Pokemon knowledge again. What type is Lucario? Okay, that's an easy one, Steel Fighting. Unlike Rayolu, which a lot of you guys had to point out to me in the last video, the how stupid I am for using a steel sandwich to look for a shiny Rayolu. I just didn't want another Halucha, okay? Sue me. Maybe Legal Eagle will make a frivolous lawsuit video about it. But Lucario's typing is important, because Medali has a lot of normal type Pokemon around. Being Steel type, it resists normal types, and being Fighting type, it's super effective against normal types. This is the perfect situation, which allows you to abuse the auto battle mechanics. Even at a lower level than the opponent, Lucario can beat these auto battles, barely taking any damage at first, and then taking no damage at all once it matches their level. And the great thing about this spot is it's mostly evolved normal Pokemon, and beating evolved Pokemon tends to give you more experience than a base form Pokemon. I sat around here for about 14 minutes, in which time Lucario went from level 29 to level 39. It also evolved my Skiploom into Jumpluff after I caught a Chansey. But seeing as how I was now over leveled for Larry's gym, I decided to get him out of the way now. But I found myself really connecting with Larry this time. This challenge run is to complete the Pokedex with your average, everyday, normal Pokeball. So I guess we really are living like Larry here. Although I violently murdered his Pokemon, so is he really living now? Skeledurge and Glimora evolutions happened during the gym fights, and since we're hitting full evolutions now, I can swap out my party members for those who need to evolve. Still in the outskirts of Medali, Smoliv turned into Dolive, and then I found a Leafeon. Screw this thing, man. I spent five minutes trying to catch it, but I barely threw Pokeballs in this time because of its moveset. Leech Seed, Sunny Day, Synthesis. I would weaken it just for it to heal right back up. I ended up giving up and just killing it because I was annoyed. But after all the sun from that battle, I started craving the shade, so I headed up north. Accidentally ran into a Fletchinder on the way, so I caught it, and after I did, my Drifloon evolved into Drifblim. But yeah, at this point, I'm basically only catching things I'm tripping over. Like this Grievard, or this Golduck running into me because I wanted the item, and then out in the west, this Ditto which I accidentally killed. But the experience did evolve Fletchinder into Talonflame. After climbing another tower, heading into Monta Nevera, and beating up some Pokemon up north, Lucario was level 45, and I felt he was ready for the next Titan. But I did make a slight brain fart here. I had only played Violet up to this point, so I kind of in my head thought this was also part Steel type. That is until I got here and saw it. And then I went, oh yeah, big brain plays only. But I figured it would be no big deal, a quick setup move, would help make up for my weakness to its ground typing. After a metal sound, it was one shot in the first fight, and two shot in the second fight. And it just targeted Arvin's Scovillain anyway. Looks like those peppers got Carolina Reapered. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was the only pepper joke I could think of. I know it's trash. But while I was going to fast travel points after this, I found out that if you came into the lake from the north side, the game just teleports you to the south side. I was just kind of stuck there, trying to pull out my glider while helplessly plummeting into the lake. 
On my way to the Titan fight here, I was trying to catch a Tanzagiri in a Veluza, but the Tanzagiri killed itself, and the Veluza was starting to kill my whole team, so I just ended it. I didn't train up at all after the Great Tusk fight though, so I was still level 46 here, so the Titan battle didn't really go too well. I metal sounded and almost got one shot, so I went for Terastalize Aurasphere, which only did about half, and that let Don Dozo knock out Lucario. I'm sorry Richard, I'm sorry. You'll be brought back to life in two seconds though, it's not a Nuzlocke run. I had to sacrifice three of the Pokemon in my party to get a clean switch, but you don't gain experience from this fight anyway, so it's not like it mattered. Another Aura Sphere took it out. Seeing as how this went kinda poorly, I fed all the experience candy I had to Richard, getting him to level 53, meaning he was now able to learn Dragon Pulse, a convenient coverage move for Tansagiri. The Dondozo very nearly still took me out in the second fight, but Arvin was able to knock it out before he could. In the third fight though, Tansagiri used its own Dragon Pulse on Greedent, and between that and takedown recoil damage, it was just too much for it. And thus, I have concluded that Arvin would be a terrible Nuzlocker. He's taking a death on 40% of its fights out here. Almost as bad as Purple Cliff. But the final Titan went down, and this was only an hour and a half after going to Medali. Kinda cruising out here. I figured with my current level, the Ice-type gym would be no problem. And it was easy, evolving Hatena into Hatrum and Nimble into Low Kicks in the process. Way easier than doing it with only Rowlets. And this is a Pokedex filling challenge after all, so let's fill up the Pokedex some more. After knocking out a deer outside, my Finian evolved into Luminion, and my Scatterbug finally evolved into Spupa. I then did a quick Terra raid, grabbing a Salandit. It was a male though, unfortunately. Up north I found a Flareon, which promptly killed itself with Flare Blitz. But this experience evolved Dolive into Arboliva, and Spupa into Vivion. Then I had Lucario, auto battle some Bisharps and Ponyards for easy levels. And while I was here I caught a Scyther that got a sneak attack on me. Then I went to Lavincia to face off with Iono for Gym 5, during which Bonsly evolved into Sudowoodo, Diglett into Dugtrio, and Lechonk into Oinkaloni. Afterward, we'd battle Nimona outside, which evolved Buizel into Floatzel. I kept up the Gym momentum, taking on Montanavera next. I used Dan and Richard for this one, snarling with Dan, Dragon Pulsing with Richard. But I kinda brain farted and forgot Mimikyu can't be hit by Dragon Pulse. Not my finest moment. Still wasn't too hard though, even though Dan was only at their level. During the Gym, Tarantula evolved to Spidop, Swooper into Clodzire. Look at him, so derpy. Next I stopped by Cascarafa, and the gym staffer lady asked me to bring Kofu his wallet. So I did the logical thing, I took the money and ran. What an idiot, trusting a complete stranger to deliver someone $50,000? Sounds like a Mr. Beast video. Wait, isn't, isn't that a Mr. Beast video? But yeah, instead of doing the water gym, I went and did the psychic gym next. It was gym 7, so Nimona wanted to battle first. After which, Shrudel evolved into Grafaii and Rookity into into Corvusquire. Then, during the gym fights, Surskit evolved into Masquerade, Palmy to Pomo, and Squovit to Greedent. But before I wanted to battle the gym leader, I decided to evolve Pomo. And I wanted to use the Pokemon Center Roof trick. I left the game for about 10 minutes, then went and knocked something out, but it didn't evolve. Only my young goose into a gumshoes. After two levels it didn't evolve, so I was like, okay then. This time I left for literally an hour while I did something else, but after another level up it still didn't work. So I said screw it, I'm just gonna be normal and walk. And after five minutes, minutes and an experience candy, we had our Palmot. And after another five minutes, I had the Psychic Badge. But I was kind of struggling with what I should do next. Like, sure, there was the Water Gym, but I haven't done any of the Team Star stuff yet, so I decided to do that. I took down Giacomo first, at this level obviously one-shotting both of his Pokemon. Then I took on Mela, but surprisingly I was not able to one-shot her Star Mobile. They do have just some set stat values, rather than using the base stats of Reviver. So it is a little tankier than a Pokemon of this level would normally be. But after that, I went to that one place that lags a lot, not even going to justify it by naming it. Wanted to get an Applin out of the way if I could, but I just found a Pineco instead. Then I took on Atticus, and this time I didn't even two-shot his car. Crazy physical bulk on that guy, I guess. But after dealing with Atticus, this was the end of day two. The ice is gonna break! Day 3 started off with some violence. I went to discover the Northern Watchtower area, in which time Ralts evolved into Curlia, and on top of the tower, Starly evolved into Staravia. But at this point, I figured I was going to want another Pokemon or two trained up for the final bosses and the Elite Four. So I went up north, where I would find a Glalie outbreak. Ice being weak to fire, and fire resisting ice, it was a good way to auto-battle with Dan. It was also good for evolving our lower level Pokemon. I evolved Corvusquire into Corvenant, 
Knight, Pineco to Fortress, Knacklestack to Garganackle, Staravia into Staraptor, and Larvitar to Pupitar. After clearing out just the one outbreak, Dan was ready for the endgame, going from level 50 to level 61. Thanks to Richard's steel typing, he was still able to take down Ortega single-handed without too much trouble. I had Dan take the lead on the fighting base, but literally all of Eerie's Pokemon have a dark or ghost type move. I guess it was still better than a weakness to the stab moves, which I could have just gotten rid of those weaknesses on Lucario by going Terra fighting. What am I doing, man? But with the final Team Star base down, it was time for the fight with the director, who I almost lost to. My entire plan was that Terra Fire Torch Song would just win, but I kind of forgot that Quaquavel was going to be a lot faster than Skeledurge, and it was just going to one-shot him. But then, because I used Terrestrialization already, Lucario is nearly one shot to stab Brick Break, and Aurasphere was going to be a three shot, so I had to keep switching out and healing. But had this fight gone on one turn longer, I would have lost. Naturally, the fight with Penny went a bit smoother though, because evolutions are pretty bad these days. Next up, I tackled Arvin, which aside from Greedent actually being kind of an issue, it went fine. After the battle, I had my Chansey evolve into Blissey. But you know, I can't help but feel like I've forgotten something. Hmm. Oh yeah. So I guess I finally have to give Kofu his wallet back, because apparently thieves can't finish a Pokemon game. Outside the auction place though, I picked up a Varum and a Grimer. After defeating the gym trainer and Kofu, plus the extra money we got from the auction, I ended up with about $23,000. So giving him his wallet back still lost me about 30 k Crime pays, kids. Crime pays. Something you guys have likely been wondering though is, where is all of my YouTube luck at? I haven't found a single shiny Pokemon this whole time yet. I think I found four or five shinies before before the end of my first playthrough, and 10 shinies in the Rowlet Only Challenge, five of those being in the same day. All of those, of course, being the full 1 in 40 96 odds. But you probably see where this is going, I found the first shiny of the save file. And I really don't even know why I was going this way, but it worked out because I got a shiny Fampy out of it, which also gives me the entry for the Pokedex. I figured I'd catch a few more Pokemon before the Elite Four, so I caught Tinkatink, Bronzor, Scrope, and Floette. And I also hyper-trained Richard in Montanavera before heading to the Champion Assessment. Tell me, which of the eight gyms gave you the most difficulty? Well, I mean, to be honest, Chica, they were all kind of easy. I have a level 75 Lucario or something. So, uh, yeah, you're gonna be pretty easy too. Let's just fast forward through the Elite Four, cause Richard swept through everyone except Larry, where Dan would take care of him. And on to Nimona, where, again, Lucario would basically sweep, except for Miascarada, who was faster and didn't get one shot by Aurasphere. But unlike Gita, I know how to use a Glimora. I had it in front with the Amulet Coin, having it intentionally die, which set up some poison spikes. Miascarada survived the Aura Sphere, but was only two poison ticks away from defeat. So I didn't even need to heal Lucario, I swapped over to Dan. See that crit? I clinched that through sheer determination to win. N Nimona, hate to break it to you, but that attack always crits, ya dingus. But with that, I completed all of the storylines in the game, and it was time for the finale in Area Zero. But before that, I wanted to really quick evolve my Curlia into Gallade, and grabbed a Shroomish, so I'd have a Breloom as well. But after that, I was legitimately just heading to Area Zero, but I ended up having a crazy reflexes moment on the way there. Did you see that? This shiny was on screen for like two tenths of a second. And it's one of the worst shinies, but somehow I was able to react to spotting it and snag it. I named this one Arnold Jr. If you know, you know. I decided to add him to the team we'd go into Area Zero with. I was kind of trying to speed run through Area Zero, but I still ended up catching a Halucha and Screamtail on the way down. And Screamtail turned out to be a great auto battle for Richard. So I knocked out enough of those to evolve Shroomish into Brelu. With Spore, of course. Speaking of Screamtails though, I absolutely hate how the Chris the lighting effects the look of this thing. Tell me this thing's tail doesn't look like the shinies. I dare you. Like, you can see the one next to me. Those tails are not the same color. And it looks like the shiny color, but that one isn't shiny. I swear this game is just one big psychology experiment to see how many people go insane from thinking they see shiny Pokemon that don't exist. But anyway, after fighting all the Paradox Pokemon, it was time to face off with the Professor. I started wrecking stuff with Dan, but Fluttermane was just too fast and offensive for it. And I was going to sacrifice Dan, just to get a clean switch to Richard, but only after I used a bunch of potions on him, which I think gave me just enough friendship with him to survive on one HP. And then he bodied the Fluttermane with a Shadow Ball, and this allowed me to switch to Richard and take down the rest of her team. But it's not over just yet. We still have the final, final battle. And for some reason, every time I see this switch in scene, I get chills. Like, as I was writing the script for this part, I got chills five or six times just looking at the video of it. Make that seven, because I watched it again. Hands down, definitely one of the best moments in a Pokemon game. 
And with that, we've completed the main story. But that's not the main goal here. We do need to complete the Pokedex, but so far I've only gotten 116 registered. So we're only 29% done. But it was time for me to go to bed, so I would leave the upcoming Pokedex grind for the next day. But actually, the grind would have to wait until after my rematches with all the gym leaders. But I mean, Dan was level 73, Richard was level 82, so use your imagination. I took down Katie, then Brassius, then Iono, then Grusha, then Rhyme, then Larry, Kofu, and Tulip. Only an hour into my day, I was on my date with Gita. We didn't end up kissing or anything, she must not have liked this trip either. So it was time for the Academy Ace Tournament. I made sure to grab the Nasty Plot TM in Area 0 during the gym rematches, so even if there was something Lucario wasn't able to easily handle normally, what? One nasty plot at the start of the fight would take care of it. And after the tournament was over, I went and grabbed some footage for a short real quick. But wait, that means I would fail the challenge. So I guess you can't complete the Pokedex without any Pokeballs after all. I'm surprised that the skeptics of this short immediately jumped to me having multiple Master Balls. But no, I just had the one. I just reloaded the save and caught it in a Pokeball after. I can't be losing this challenge for a meme after all. But anyway, now it's time to speedrun some Pokemon. Outside Artisan, I snagged Teddy Ursa, Sunflora, Venonat, Pikachu, and Steenie. Then I used my experience candies to evolve Fido into Dashbun. Now get ready, because I'm about to do a Poker Rap. On the East Coast, we got Watchroll, Quillfish, Marini, Shelter, Aracuda, Finizen, Magikarp, Love Disc, Cry Brawler, Pin Church, and Shallow, Swiggly, Slowpoke, Magnemite, Tabbolt, Sandigast, Another Slowpoke, Murkrow, and the Baskillion. Catch em, catch em, gotta catch em all. Pokemon! Alright, I'm gonna be normal now. I did that much just for the bit, but I imagine we don't really want to see every single Pokemon. So let's jump to the tough ones like Roar and Moon. Took about four minutes to catch, but right after that, Fluttermane went in the first Pokeball I threw. But catching those wasn't even the main reason I went into the cave. It was just to beat up the level 55 chances that spawned down there. This, of course, lended to some insanely fast experience grinding for my entire party. And this was the main method through which I evolved all of the catches. And as I saw the other Pokemon I didn't have in the decks yet spawn, I would go ahead and catch them. A little while later, I went and struggled with a Great Tusk for four minutes, and another two minutes with Brute Bonnet. And after some smaller catches, it was time for the real test of this challenge, the second Coridon. Of course, the biggest problems for this challenge are the legendary Pokemon, and this is where plenty of people would use a Master Ball. But I ask you, why? For the majority of the legendaries of any given game, you are going to have to save and reload until you catch that Pokemon. But why not just do that one more time and save the Master Ball for a situation that might actually actually need it, which would namely be a shiny Pokemon you don't have yet trying to kill itself. People roasted me for using one of mine on an Oracorio, saying it's not even a legendary, but I'd argue a legendary is probably the worst use of a Master Ball, unless it's a legendary that could be shiny. But even with my regular Pokeballs, it took me only 12 minutes to catch Coridon. So with your fancy Timer Balls, Dusk Balls, or Repeat Balls even for this one, I think you'll be okay. After that, I had two more Paradox Pokemon to catch, being Sandy Shocks and Slitherwing, and after a little more catching and exploring, it was time to do the rest of the legendaries. But first, we'd have to go to school. Taking the history classes unlocks the shrines as fast travel points, making it quite mandatory in my opinion. It only takes about 10 or 15 minutes, then we're ready to find all the stakes and take them on. But it was already pretty late, so I just wrapped up the day with beating up some more chances. On day 5, I had a bit of a mission. I wanted to be done with this today because day 5 was the start of the 7 star Decidueye raid, and I was going to get myself a shiny Rowlet. And I wanted to use this save file for it if I could, but I would have my work cut out for me. The first thing I did was trade someone with Violet for a Charcadag to evolve into Cerulege. This person was in my Discord server and they needed Armor Rouge, so I helped them out. It was still in a regular Pokeball, don't worry. Then I went around catching stuff for about an hour before heading back to beat up Chanseys. I was just using Mach Punch on Breloom and used Ether to restore PP when I needed it. Naturally, not having to leave the area would speed up the process. I would also end up seeing a lot of Pokemon while doing this, so many that I found a shiny Palmo during the training. Great, now I have four Palmy Line Shinies. I was starting to run out of things to evolve though, so I did a couple weird ones like Annihilate and King Gambit. And I really didn't have much of anything up north or in the laggy place yet, so I spent about an hour catching that stuff. And I would switch off every half hour or so, going out and catching things, then going back to the cave area to train them up. Around this point, we had a hundred or so Pokemon 
Pokemon left to grab, so I made a list of what I didn't have in the decks just yet. I did it on paper, because my mind just works better that way. What can I say? I'm a real boomer. I was going along through areas, catching everything I needed from each one. And while I was in the desert, I needed to catch a Relor. Voted best walking evolution by you guys. But just minutes after catching the one I needed for the Pokedex, I found a more interesting one, you might say. But after catching most of the evolution lines we had left, I had our good friend Austin John show me where all the stakes were, because I had only collected like two of them through the entire playthrough. I collected them all, taking about an hour, during which I was able to collect the 999th coin I needed for Gimagool, and then I took on all of the legendaries. Chi Yu took about five minutes, Ting Lu I caught in the first ball, Wo Xian was the longest, taking about eight minutes, and Shen Pao took about six minutes. Honestly, not terrible. Being able to catch all of them in a half hour is better than I would have expected, but after evolving my other walking evolutions and getting a couple other things done, I was out of time, and it was time for the Decidueye raid. Let's go! So that was all for day 5, and day 6 would be when I have to finish everything up. I didn't have too much left to do though. I evolved Eevee into Sylveon, Arctabax into Baxcalibur, took care of some pre-evolutions that were easier to get through breeding than catching, but then I was done with everything I could get and one copy of Pokemon Scarlet. Except I wasn't. I was missing one Pokemon, Squawkabilly. Even after going through the list of Pokemon on Cerebee, I still managed to forget this thing, and thus I voted number one most forgettable Pokemon of Paldea. And let's be honest, it's just a worse Chadot. So everything was done in Scarlet, but I needed the Violet exclusives, so I had to grab those, but I felt using my main save file that was already done with the Pokedex would have been a little cheap, but thankfully I had another Violet save file that was already in the endgame. That's right folks, it's the return of the Round Squad. This save file had a whole 10 Pokemon in the Pokedex, so it was perfect, but I also ended up making this challenge slightly harder by using only Rowlets to catch everything, and I immediately regretted this decision because an Ice Q took 5 minutes to catch. But I guess it was still fine because I caught Gulpin and Passimian in the first ball. Then I caught a Clawitzer, where I found the shiny one in the last video, and I caught a static spawn of Shelgon in the Bamboo Forest. Misdreavus was unexpectedly annoying, took about 6 minutes because of Parish Song. Then Dracloak took another 4. After that I made a baby making sandwich real quick to hatch some Quaxley. I hatched about 10 eggs, didn't get a shiny, which would have been crazy, full odds. But then I went into Area 0. I took about 4 minutes to catch Iron bundle, then I made my way down to Maridon, who was still just chilling here from a few months ago. I hyped up my Rowlets and prepared them for the worst because this was going to be a long, grueling battle. A fight for the ages. A fight for the fate of the universe. And I caught it on the second Pokeball. Yeah, but go ahead and tell me why you used the Master Ball for this fight. After that, I went outside, accidentally killed the first Iron Moth and Iron Thorns I was trying to catch, took two minutes for an Iron Hands, seven minutes for an Iron Thorns, and somehow a ridiculous 15 minute bout with an Iron Moth. The longest catch time of the challenge by far. Maybe the catch rate's a little wonky, but what was really wonky was my Iron Treads. Its model's AI just kind of broke on turn one, and after hitting it, it just disappeared, and stayed disappeared for the entire fight. I think it had something to do with it being on the loading zone trigger or something, but it was really weird. Took about five minutes to catch. After that, all I needed was Iron Jugulus and Iron Valiant. Took about seven minutes between the two of them. But with that, we got all of the Violet exclusives, so I just had to trade them over. But then I realized after I went to all of this trouble, I could have just started a union circle and caught everything but Maridon in this save file. Even the breeding, I could have just union circled the Quaxley. But you know, I had a trade anyway, and you know what, it was worth it being able to use the round squad again. So I took care of Palafin, all of the trade evolutions, and the Violet exclusives. And I'm just gonna let the image of this trade sink into your mind. But after the trading, then breeding a couple of the evolved forms and beating up some more chances, I had one final evolution line to do. The last of the starters. But I didn't have an extra save file with the Sprigatito on it that I could use. Because apparently you can't be logged into the same account on two switches at the same time. So I couldn't just trade from my main Violet profile. But I figured if I got Sprigatito, then I was basically guaranteed it would be in a regular Pokeball, so I surprise traded for it. And for some unknown reason, it took about a half hour. I probably should have used the Fuego 
Subway Coco for Sprigatito or Craxley for Sprigatito trade code, but I didn't think of it at the time. I figured getting a Sprigatito wouldn't be that hard, but I was traded a bunch of other junk. Even some cool stuff like Frokies and Charmanders and Special Balls, and you know, uh, a hacked iron bundle. You know, the usual. But I finally got our Japanese Sprigatito that was quite well IV bred, and I went down to Area Zero for one last experience grind. Evolving Sprigatito into Florigato, and Florigato into Meowskarada. And with that, I successfully completed the Pokedex with only regular Pokeballs. This took me a bit over six days to complete, and a rough estimate of about 40 to 50 hours. I didn't actually check this time, that was my bad. Really, it wasn't that bad, there wasn't even really that much time added to it. The main time added was just using Spore and False Wipe at the start of the fights, rather than using Quick Balls. But I'll probably do this again sometime. I've done some other stuff on this save file since then, including the 7 star Decidueye for a couple of days. While I was farming that, I got a shiny Relor, a shiny Tadbulb, and a shiny Young Goose. Then I spent a while trying to find a good 5 or 6 star Ditto so I could catch it on a Spanish save file, but I'm genuinely convinced that finding a good Ditto raid is harder than finding shinies. You wanna know why? I found 6 shinies before I found a single 5 or 6 star Ditto. Like, come on, I spent literally like 10 to 15 hours trying to find one 5 star Ditto raid. But anyway, that should do it for this one. Huge thanks again to you guys for 15,000 subscribers when this video goes out. Maybe we could get 20k before the next video? But all the support this past month has meant so much to me and I can't even begin to thank you guys. And if you want more Pokemon content, you're going to see more if you hit that subscribe button. But I have been Trevor, I go by Trails, and I will catch you guys next time.